Hello, losers, cool beans, and other lovable weirdos. Hi, this is not part one. Please go check out part one of my Coriz's right door. It's a ride. It is. I know how it ends. You gotta watch to see how it ends, but if you like some mm, uncomfortable, horrific images and mysteriously being stuck places, stick around. My night was restless. Half of the time I wasn't sure if I was awake or asleep. Weird sounds kept waking me up. By the time the sun had risen, it felt like I had barely slept at all. Today would be the day we'd arrive at a place called Kajemhi. From there, I would be able to get back home one way or another. I rubbed my eyes as I opened the door that led out into the hallway. But something was wrong. The hallway looked different. Was it? Shorter? There definitely used to be more doors here. Mm. I know what I'm expecting, but let's see if it goes there. Yet. It was as if a new wall and door had appeared where the hallway originally continued to the restaurant area. I approached the new door and tried to turn the doorknob, but it was locked. Slowly, panic set in. Was I trapped in here? Did everyone already leave? There was no way they had left me behind, right? I quickly approached one of the doors in the hallway and knocked. Silence. I tried the next, and then the third. All was silent. My heart rate accelerated. I forced myself to calm down and think this through. There was no way they would leave a passenger behind. And even if they did, they would notice sooner or later that I was still in here. The most productive thing to do right now would be checking if the other rooms were open. Maybe I could find a way to make people aware of the fact that I was still in here. I considered which door to try first. Oh, which room should I go into? Room one! The room was unfurnished and windowless. A sole light bulb in the middle of the ceiling illuminated it faintly. I could see about fifteen people sitting on the dirty ground. Most of them seemed to be adults. There were a couple of children cowering next to what I assumed to be their parents. One person from the group, an older man, raised his head as if waking from a dream. The door! It's open! More and more people lifted their heads, and I could feel their stares piercing me. The man was the first to stand up and shuffle towards the door. I stepped aside, but as he tried to cross the threshold, he suddenly stopped. He was frozen in mid-air. His fingers tightened as if he was exerting great effort. Disappointed, he stepped back. It's no use. He sulked back to his spot and slumped to the floor. The other people in the room lowered their heads, their hopes dashed in an instant. I wasn't sure what was going on, but it was evident that they were in trouble. I quickly walked up to the older man. Hey, um, do, do you know what's going on here? No, we all woke up in this room and are unable to leave. And now it seems like you're stuck here with us as well. My heart stopped for a second, and panic slowly started to set in. Was I really trapped in here? I hastily walked to the door and... stepped right through. The man stared at me with wide eyes. This means that you, instead of the girl, might be able to help us. Right after he uttered those words, some of the people in the room lifted their heads and looked at me. Some with a look of disbelief, and some with hope in their eyes. So there was someone else on this ship who could enter and exit this room freely. And I bet it's Hootie Girl. What did she look like? He started explaining. I soon realized that this description fit someone I knew. It sounded just like the girl I had met on the deck yesterday. 
so she got into this mess as well. We asked her to help us, but she just laughed and left. That wasn't quite how I remembered her, but it wasn't like I'd known her for a long time. Was her nice appearance just an act? I shifted my attention back to the man before me. There might be people behind the other doors that we could possibly help. Please let me know if you have anything that you don't need, or if you are in need of something. That way I can make sure that everyone gets out of here safely. Some people nodded in agreement while the majority stayed stoic. A woman stood up, getting something from a shelf, and approached me. Found some medicine in this room. We can't give away all of it, but maybe it will help someone. The label was barely legible. I could make out the letters, fun, I. I still gladly took the bottle and thanked her as she trotted back. May I please, if you find any food, bring it to us. All right, I should head out, but I'll let you know if I find anything. These words, I stepped back through the door. It closed behind me as if a wind gust had suddenly blown through the hallway. Which room should I go into? Room two! The door creeped open and light spilled into the damp room. A crowd of about forty people occupied the space. Some were sitting on the floor, and some were leaning against the dirty walls. Suddenly, someone near the door darted up and shoved me aside. Hey, it's Frederick! It was Frederick, who I had met only briefly while I was chatting with Sabrina. He tried to force himself through the door, but was stopped mid-air. An invisible force was pushing him back, and he's not happy about it. Some more people approached the door and tried the same, but to no avail. Damn it! Frederick slammed his fist into the wall. I thought this was my chance. Frustrated, he went back to where he was originally sitting. Since I had been in a room like this before, I knew that I was able to travel back and forth. Hey, um, a few of the people looked up as I started speaking. I should be able to walk in and out. There are also survivors in the other rooms. I might be able to get you some things if you need anything specific. Frederick shot up and walked up to me until he was way too close for comfort. We need food. You'll get some for us, right? That sounded more like a threat than a request. Yeah, I can do that if I find some. I sat back so I didn't have to smell his sour sweat anymore. Do you, have, do you happen to have anything here that you don't need? Just in case other people trapped in the ship needs anything specific? He looked at me as if I had just made a joke. What? No, even if we had anything, we wouldn't just be giving it away. I looked at him skeptically. All right, all right, I know what you want. I have a gun with me. If you bring me food, I'll trade it for the gun. A gun? I'd never used a firearm before, and I wasn't sure how a gun would help me in this situation. Hesitantly, I agreed to escape Frederick's impatient gaze. Maybe it would come in handy after all. But you'd have to make sure to share the food with the others. All right, whatever, just give us something, all right? I don't have anything with me right now, sorry. I have a horrible feeling I'm going to have to choose between room one and room two for giving food. Then get the hell out of here and find something. All right, asshole. He shouted at me and shoved me out of the room. I tripped and fell to the floor as he slammed the door shut in front of my face. That guy was a huge jackass. But I still felt bad for the other people in the room. I'd have to go back there eventually if I wanted to help them. I dusted myself off and turned towards the other doors. Room number three! I entered the dimly lit room. It was desolate except for a few cans of food and a few water bottles in one of the corners. There was also two rather young children, one boy and one girl, in the middle of the room. Oh, it's, it's Lanny and Amy. As I saw the girl kneeling over the boy's motionless body, Oh, my heart dropped. It was Amy and Lanny. She looked up at me with pleading eyes as I rushed to their side. Lanny was covered in sweat, indicating a heavy fever. His limbs were heavily bruised and he was heaving. I glanced over at Amy. Fortunately, she seemed to be all right. I'm Scott. We met yesterday. You're Amy, right? Y yeah Her voice was shaking. 
Lanny is sick. Don't worry, Amy. We'll find a way to help him. She hesitantly nodded. That seemed to calm her down a bit. I had some medicine on me. Or at least that's what the woman who gave it to me called it. I couldn't really read the label. Should I give it to Lanny? Hmm. I could go check out room four and come back. Didn't know if what I had here was proper medicine, so I decided not to risk it. You seem to have food and water here. Do you think I could take some of it with me? More people are trapped in here, and they don't seem to have any. I don't mind. Thank you. She didn't seem very talkative, but that was to be expected considering how concerned about her brother she must be. I will let you know once I find something that can help you, okay? Okay. She turned back towards her brother. I walked by the canned food and considered taking some with me. Take half. I decided to take part of it with me. That way they would still have some left. I left the room and found myself back in the hallway. I'm sure maybe if we took all of it, we could give it to room one and two, but I'm like, kids gotta eat too, and they haven't pissed me off. Right, Frederick? Okay, room four, what you got? I'm going to assume Sabrina. The room seemed to be empty, except for a lonely light bulb hanging from the ceiling. It didn't seem to be working properly, as it barely gave off any light and flickered every now and then. It took my eyes a while to get adjusted to the darkness, and right as they did, I realized that the room wasn't actually as empty as I had thought. A huge dog that I hadn't seen right away because of the poor lighting was just a few feet in front of me and it was determined to rip me into pieces. Uh-oh. I hastily stumbled backwards, almost tripping. This was it, I thought. I was going to get mauled. Maybe they're friendly? But nothing happened. All I could hear was the rattling of a chain. I slowly opened my eyes and saw that the dog was fortunately chained to the wall per its red collar. But I bet something really useful's in this room right near the dog, isn't it? It was firmly struggling to get free. After confirming that there was indeed no risk of it getting free, I took a closer look around the room. There were small, glittering objects strewn across the room. There were small, glittering objects strewn across the ground next to the animal. Next to the dog was a body. A badly mutilated one. A foul feeling spread through my stomach. Did the dog do this? The corpse was lying too close to the dog to examine it. Instead, I cautiously inched closer to the object scattered on the ground next to it. I picked one up and examined it. It was a bullet. I had no use for the bullet yet, but if I did in the future, I'd know where to find one. When I took another close look at the area behind the dog, I saw that there was an opening in the wall. It seemed to lead into another section of the ship. Oh no. No, I don't, don't make me do this. This was the first time since getting trapped here that I had seen a possible escape route. The only problem was the furious animal blocking it. I couldn't think of a way to get around the dog without getting mauled and so I decided to retreat for now and look for a way to get past it without getting myself in danger. Suddenly I felt the floor beneath me vibrate with increasing intensity. What was happening? An earthquake? The intensity of the rumbling increased and soon I was thrown from side to side. I struggled to stabilize myself but ultimately failed. My back hit the wall hard and I fell to the ground. I rolled into a ball, trying to protect my head as I slid along the floor. The sound of metal breaking apart filled my ears. It was deafening. And then it stopped just as suddenly as it had started. I stayed in a fetal position for a while longer, fearing that everything would start shaking again. But it seemed like it was finally over. Were the people inside the rooms all right?
Had we perhaps run ashore? Would someone come and rescue us, now that we were on land? A myriad of questions filled my mind. My eyes fell on the locked door to the hallway. Something about it was off. It was barely noticeable, but it seemed like the door was slightly skewed. I quickly approached it, turned the doorknob, and pulled on it. It was still stuck, but it did feel like I would be able to pry it open with more force. And so I tugged again and again, each time the door inching more and more open until... Mm. The door flew open and I was thrown back. A strong gust of wind hit my face. I reflexively closed my eyes. I celebrated internally. Finally, I would be able to get out of here and look for help. Finally, this nightmare would end. But I was mistaken. What I expected to see beyond the door was the hall and the restaurant from the day before. But my expectations were utterly betrayed. The ocean. A huge body of water was in the distance. As I looked down, I saw that we were hundreds of meters above the ground. How? How were we moving on land? Maybe we're not on land, buddy. What shocked me the most was I could make out thin, long legs supporting the ship. Okay. Their movements were so smooth that it felt like we were floating. It was as if I was inside something that was... alive? My eyes wandered across the rest of the ship below me. It must have broken in half. The form of the tear was quite odd, though. It looked like a huge bite mark. As if something even bigger than this cruise ship had ripped into it. But that couldn't be true. There was no animal big enough that could have bitten off such a huge chunk of the ship. Yeah, no animal. As the creature I was on made a sharp turn, the ocean drifted out of view. My grip on the doorframe tightened. I feared I would get thrown off. Then it stopped. My eyes widened in shock as I saw the scene before me. The view was surreal. Oh, that's so cool. Oh. One single town was standing in the middle of a wasteland. Wandering through that wasteland were enormous, outlandish creatures amongst gigantic mushrooms. They looked like something straight out of a nightmare. I wiped my eyes, trying to dispel the illusion before me, but it wouldn't go away. My breathing became ragged and my chest contracted painfully. I had to accept this as my reality. In a trance, I stepped away from the doorframe. A wave of rage overcame me as I lashed out and kicked the wall. A dull pain spread throughout my foot, but I barely noticed it. Tears started to well up in my eyes. Was there even any reason for me to go on? Why shouldn't I just go back to my room, lie down in bed, and stay there? I leaned against the wall and stared at the ceiling. My feet were shaking. But I was finally starting to calm down. I knew that getting angry wouldn't help. What I was seeing wasn't logical in any way. It went against everything I knew. I was a scientist, so not being able to understand this place frustrated me. Above all, it scared me. But giving up wasn't the right thing to do. It wasn't the logical choice if I really wanted this nightmare to end. I'd escape sooner or later and get myself into a better position eventually. That's what I hoped, at least. Fingers crossed! The ship may still be suspended high above the ground, but there must be some way to get down. I would figure out what to do next once I was out of here. Close the door and slowly let my eyes drift over the four doors in front of me. Okay, room three medicine. I was worried about those two. All kinds of terrible scenarios had popped into my head. I glanced around the room. They fortunately seemed to still be more or less okay. I approached them. 
Amy was still huddled over Lanny's body. Her face was twisted with worry. His condition seemed to have worsened, which became more and more apparent as I got closer. Spots on his arms and limbs seemed to be bruised. Some kind of black ulcer similar to buds grew out of some of them. Uh-oh. I was sure he wouldn't last much longer without medicine. Amy looked up at me with sad eyes. I had some medicine on me. At least that's what the woman who gave it to me called it. Couldn't really read the label. Listen, either he... At this point, it's either bad scenario, bad scenario, or good scenario. So, you know, we, we, take, we take the chance and hope it's a good scenario. It seemed like he would die if nothing was done. I decided to take the risk and administer the medicine to him. I have some medicine with me. He should be alright in no time if he takes this. I had sounded more confident than I actually was in the hopes of cheering Amy up. I made sure that he was conscious enough to drink it. Then I carefully lifted his head and put the bottle to his mouth. He slowly gulped it down and I set his head back down. Will he be okay now? I think so, but it will take time for the medicine to take effect. All it was left to do was hope that what I gave him would help against his fever. I should get going again. I'll come back soon to check on you. Okay, please don't take so long this time. Long? I hadn't been out for that long, but it was understandable that she didn't want to be left all alone. She was likely exaggerating. Or maybe time's not working how you think it is. I walked by the canned food and considered taking some with me. No! They need it. I decided against taking any. I left the room and found myself back in the hallway. I'm going to make my own life difficult because room one is nice. I entered the room for a second time. Even though I hadn't been away for that long, everything seemed different. The faces of the people here had darkened considerably. I spotted the old man that I had talked to not too long ago and approached him. But he didn't even look up as I greeted him. He just sat there with a blank expression on his face, not even moving an inch. Hey, is everything okay? No response. As I looked around, I noticed that none of the others had moved from their spot, nor had any of them looked up since I had entered this room. I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't respond. It was as if they had suddenly turned into statues. Their eyes were devoid of any signs of life. I tried shaking them awake, but they didn't react. Hello? Can anyone here hear me? I cried out into the room in desperation, but my words echoed back emptily. What was going on? What had happened to them? Even though I was surrounded by people, I felt alone. I jerked my head around. I scanned the dim room with my eyes, until I finally saw something in one of the corners move ever so slightly. My heart started to race as I stepped closer. I couldn't quite make out what had made the sound, but it was probably a human, right? It made a gurgling sound and I hesitated for a bit. Horrific images of all kinds of creatures popped into my mind. I shook my head and tried to get them out of my head. After a few more cautious steps, I was finally close enough to see it. It was... a girl. Oh. No, it wasn't just some girl. It was the same girl that I had ran into on the deck. Her body was limp, but as opposed to the other people in this room, she seemed more or less conscious. I cautiously picked her up and made my way towards the door. The words of the old man echoed in my ears. He told me that she was able to pass through the door, just like I was. But why hadn't she left the room by herself? Did something happen that she got caught up in? How did she get in here anyway? I would have noticed her in the hallway. I turned towards my room. It had a bed and she would probably be safe there. Opening the door while carrying a person was no easy feat, but I finally succeeded to put her on the bed. Go you, Scott, because I'd still be in the hallway being like, you know what, the floor will do. <laughs> or, you know, the floor will temporarily do while I open the door. <laughs> I say this like I could carry another human, but... 
Mm. Her facial expression changed from one of pain to one of relaxation. She instantly fell asleep. I debated whether I should wake her up and try to get some information out of her, but it didn't seem like she was in any condition to answer questions. Seeing her sleep so soundly made me want to take a break as well, but I pushed myself to step out of the room and back into the hallway. I still needed to see if there was any way to get out of here. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out my channel. I have a variety of horror content, shorter and longer games, the occasional rebuilding a spooky game or show location in The Sims 4, and until next time, I hope you're having a better day than everybody on this cursed mushroom reality cruise ship.